welcome to Destiny and Doom, the show where we ask you what color friendship bracelet you would like today. I'm Lauren, aka Obercrazy, your DM for these lovely, lovely people before me, who I will now introduce and ask what their favorite moment from last week was. Uh, Dante, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us your favorite moment. Hi, I'm Dante Bosco. Um... And my favorite moment, from, one of my favorite moments from last week is when I, when I turned nine feet tall. <laughs> you say that as though you haven't, it's not nine feet, I think you grew nine inches. Nine inches? Nine I thought inch. it was nine feet. No, nine inches is a lot too. Nine inches I, is a ton. Nine inches is a lot, that's almost a foot, so I, I grew a lot. You did. Um, I like that I have to actually add that to my uh, my stats. Yeah, because that, that hasn't gone away. You've taken a long rest and you've woken up. Still nine inches taller. Nine, nine inches taller. That's amazing. For the rest of my life. <laughs> as far as you know. I dig it. I can dig it. <laughs> Mika, how about you? Uh, hi, I'm Mika Burton, and uh, my favorite moment from last week was Solaris just popping into her shell uh, as her first move. <laughs> <laughs> that is becoming a trend on the game that I play uh, on Wednesdays. Our our turtle that we roll with tends to do that a lot as well. So. Sneaky turtles. Sneaky turtle. Is that the term for it? <laughs> Sneaky turtles. I love it. Well, Jack, how about you? Hi, I'm Jack from Rooster Teeth, and uh, I would say my favorite part, if it's not going to be me jumping into, or, or Solaris jumping into her shell, I think her falling asleep and then rolling on her back, <laughs> screaming, was, uh, that'd probably be my favorite bit. That was adorable. And Kraken, how about you? Uh, I'm doing well. I, I'm excited. I finally revealing um vance's backstory and his uh his heartbreak around not knowing his deity was uh was a lot of fun having one sip of beer we now know his his weakness hopefully won't be exploited <laughs> um yeah that was a lot of fun and yeah the, the whole fight was great too I, I love uh i love solaris's character i feel like we're gonna be countering that a lot we're gonna get in a fight and she'll just uh disappear and we'll be <laughs> one man down it'll be great <laughs> totally down just you know yeah, a yeah. little short sure. well protected I'm, exactly i'm waiting for the moment in where you start using her shell like it's super mario brothers and and throwing it at people that will be an interesting cool. moment oh we should do that yeah all right that's you gotta give me an maybe idea maybe i shouldn't right. have said that as a deal. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get like a mallet and like play golf with the giant turtle shell <laughs> Solaris would appreciate, but I'll let yeah. Jack decide on that. Oh, she one. won't see. She won't see who's doing it. She'll be in the show. I'll be fine. What was that? <laughs> She'll never know. She'll never yeah. know. She'll just suddenly be somewhere else. All right. Well, last time that we were here, you guys had had a fun fight with a creepy girl, her imp familiar, and managed to defeat them despite a couple of, of interesting moments along the way. You then had a chance to talk with York, who was the wizard that you'd originally come to talk to. He was able to fill you in on some backstory about um, Mary Ann and Kristoff, about their adventuring time together, and the place that he thinks a necromancer might ha be holding up who seems to be working with the goddess Bathsheba and handed off a bunch of, of potions and kicked you out of his house. And you went back to the Rooster and Dragon, had a lovely afternoon, divulged some backstory, got some magic items, went to sleep, had some dreams, and it is now the next morning. You guys wake up refreshed, you get your hit points back, you get your spells back, you get everything back, and you have earned a level so you get some new fun powers that I look forward to seeing Yay. at work as I throw stuff at you, as I try to kill you. So it is, <laughs> it is the next morning. You guys have come downstairs for breakfast. What would you like um, to do? I, I will say uh, Vance will uh, wake up as early as he can and rush down and be basically ready and ready to go. After we had that dream, he's like, you know, I'm onto something. Like, you know, something's connecting here. My deity spoke to me again. Like, he's... He's like, you know, as ready to go as possible. Find a religion. He's finding his religion. Mm, yeah. <laughs> He's, he thinks he has found his actual God. When you come downstairs, the only person that's there is Marianne. She's, um, she looks tired and looks like maybe has woken up moments before and is putting the kettle on. She says, oh, hi, dear. Uh, can I, it's going to be a little while before I have breakfast ready. The sun isn't even up. Are you, do you need anything? Can I help you? Yes, is there is there anything I can I can assemble? Do you have any like you know Legos or the equivalent in this fantasy world that I can build things and and then I will prove to my God that I I am I am a worksman. 
See, now, guess what? Legos are in this universe. Well, <laughs> uh, I actually... I didn't mean to... No, no, <laughs> no. Well, they're not actually Legos because I think those are a copyright thing. So let, let it okay. stay. Marianne looks at you curiously and says, well, if you're, you're interested, I, I have some uh, building bricks that my... You know, my youngest had for a very long time. Hold on a moment. She goes back into the rooms that her and Kristoff are basically their their apartment, and comes back out with a bucket that is filled with those lovely childhood bricks with the little dots on them that are um, legally distinct from Legos. And hands you the bucket and says, "Well, if you're feeling like you, you need to expend some creative energy, there you go. I I would ask you to help with breakfast, but honestly, I." I here and she gets the sense that you may need to just keep yourself busy and hands you the bucket this is great i did this when i was a kid i know just what to do and i and i take it to the a table and i instantly start building like the best i can do like a monument in <laughs> little bricks what kind of the, monument uh, are you building uh i i try i guess i'll study the holy symbol and i'll, I'll try to copy whatever that that symbol is as best i can okay um I don't know if I want you to roll a check for this or if I just want you to roll with it. Uh, roll me an investigation check as you study okay. the symbol. Uh, let's see. I think that's a 12. Okay, it's early in the morning. You have to kind of wipe sleep from your eyes. You're still a little wired from this dream. And so you get the, the basic sense of what this symbol is. You're not sure if you get all of the details, but you definitely have plenty of these little tiny blocks. Uh, the rest of you come downstairs. Not long after that, you see Vance is over at a table all by himself with a pile of building bricks in all sorts of colors, just happily ascending, assembling them into a giant gear type thing. Uh, Marianne is bringing him over coffee and a plate of breakfast. And she says, ah, good morning. What Can I get you all some breakfast as you get ready for the day? Bacon. Bacon. Absolutely. Get that bacon? All the bacon. And she goes back and brings you an entire plate of bacon. Is, uh, this, is this good for Dragonborn? I'm not exactly sure. Do you just eat? We like, we like pork. We okay. eat pork. Oh, good. Can I uh, second on that plate of bacon? <laughs> well, why don't I have uh, your dragon boar friend share, and I'll get you your own in just a moment, okay? No and, problem. And ma'am? No and she looks over at Solaris. Do you have any fried lettuce? Uh, I have lettuce, and I have the capability of frying it, sure. That would be incredible. This will take a moment, but I'll be right back. And she she leaves and, <laughs> and leaves you to sit with Vance and his pile of bricks. <laughs> Just a note, does Solaris eat like a turtle where it's like, uh, and then just like, mm, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. You'll be spending the next 45 minutes as Solaris eats one leaf of lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's entertaining the whole time. <laughs> yeah, very quickly, Marianne is back with a second plate of bacon and some coffee and juice and things. And then it takes about another 10 or 15 minutes before she does arrive with um, basically what looked like those huge leaves of romaine lettuce deep fried. She says, you'll have to tell me if I did this okay. This is the first time I've ever done, done this. And puts down the plate and leaves you to your morning breakfast. What would you like to do? Uh, so Lars begins eating the fried lettuce. It's pretty good. It's not quite like homemade, but you know. Nothing really is. This is quite tasty. It's not like homemade, but nothing really is. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Vance will uh, have had a little bit of coffee, but similar to beer, one sip of coffee, and he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> he's just like going nuts with the, with the building blocks. <laughs> uh, Vance, go ahead and roll a performance check for me. OK. Uh... Uh, okay, four. All right. The, um, the thing that he has assembled on the table in bricks that he is super proud of is crooked, but it does seem to resemble some sort of gear. I, I hold it up proudly to the rest of the party. Ah, you see? It's, it's the gone symbol. Not bad, Vance. Not bad. Where did not the symbol good. go? Thank you. <laughs> not good, but not bad. 
<laughs> I, I get that a lot. Mary well, comes uh, back over to, to refresh the coffee. After we all finish breakfast, do you think we should figure out a plan for the day? You betcha. I'm Are we going to choose which stores? What do want to do? Oh, uh, right, about that uh, friendship bracelet. Remember we said we were going to wait until after the mission to go, right? Oh, yes, I remember. I was hoping that you had forgotten. <laughs> oh. No, no, I, I didn't forget. We will we'll, we'll definitely go. I, pr I promised, right? I promised twice. So we're definitely going to go. You did promise twice, and we are best friends, right? The best of friends who are going to have matching friendship bracelets. And red, if I remember correctly? Red is what I would like. Red is what you'll get. Oh. Okay, friend. <laughs> I'm okay, friend. Go whatever you are. <laughs> we can, we'll treat ourselves to some, some great friendship bracelets right after we uh, find this temple on, that we're supposed to go find. We have, who has the map again? I believe, Vance, you were the one that grabbed the journal from the I York. have the map and journal. <laughs> Let yes. me study it. As you flip through it, uh, most of it, you, you've kind of taken a quick glance at it, most of it is the half insane, half inane ramblings of York, kind of journal-ish, you know, dear diary, today I killed four closets, that kind of thing. But he had bookmarked the portion in where, when they many, many years ago had gone to this temple, including the, the general location of it south. He, it's a general map with the marking of where this, this decrepit temple is. And it looks to be about a day by foot, but it's all off road. It's all gonna be just through the woods, uh, about a day's trip south. And he's also got a map of the interior which he's listed as multiple levels, but each level is just a, a repeated version of the same floor plan over and over and over again. So you've got kind of a, a general direction to go in and a general idea of what you're looking for. Hmm. Um, do we have any camping materials? Does anyone own a tent? You know, I think we're probably gonna be have to camp in the woods if we're gonna go out here. It's really kind of ways out. Oh. I mostly use my own shell when I go out and sleep outdoors. Makes sense. Anyone else have a shell? Use, do you not use your shell? <laughs> um, your I guess shell. I could, and I try to do a cheesy thing, right? Slip into my armor best <laughs> I can. <laughs> are you trying to, to do it for real, or are you just trying to be funny? Uh, you know what? Let's do it for real. Let's see how, let's see how, I, how far I can get in there. <laughs> Give me a dexterity check. All right. Ugh. <laughs> uh, eight. Uh, your armor is nicely fitted, and you've put it on correctly this morning, and thus the attempt to withdraw into it fails miserably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still looking around for any sort of public approval or reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring blankly. <laughs> Do you need help with your shell? Yes, you're, yes, I do. <laughs> he walks over. He's trying, like Solar starts trying to shove his arm into his. It into probably his hurts. <laughs> probably hurts a lot. Uh, it depends how, how hard you shove in, Solaris. Uh, I mean, like enough to move him. You know, like she's pushing on his elbow, trying to push it in. Not really conscious of how human DNA works or uh, anatomy. Skin. Yeah, you you are yeah. human. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Solaris comes over and is giving your elbow a shove. And of course, because of how your anatomy works, basically you're just going mm, 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 every time. Meanwhile, okay, Fred okay. is snickering over her coffee watching this morning entertainment. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just get a cloth shell that we can all sleep in. How's that sound? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I, yeah, I, 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 really I, do have a, I do have a bedroll in my, in my entertainer's pack, my backpack. Yeah. Like, all okay. I have is a bedroll. That's room for one. That's only room for one. I, I think we all have bed rolls, so we can maybe just make a campfire and take turns watching, you know, for spookums coming at us. Zombies? Yeah. You guys have all had various experience with camping out on, on the road, in the wilderness, roughing it between places, as, as you are all 
oh, well-traveled in a way. So while you may not have tents or anything hardcore unless you want to go try to purchase anything, you, you do have some basic supplies and provisions to be able to at least spend a couple of nights on the road if you need. I'm good sleeping on the ground. I don't need a tent. Okay. I'm a dragon. We, we don't, we're not scared of the elements. I prefer lots of soft pillows. So if we find any, let me know. I'm kind Would of a light like sleeper. Hello, before we leave. Yes, I, I'll ask. Is it okay if I just ask real quick the innkeeper if we could just take a couple pillows? I'll be real quick. <laughs> Marianne says, "Well, just in case somebody comes by, I'd rather I'd rather not. We're we're a little short, but but like we're saving your lives, so." Well, yeah, and I, I gave you those towels. You could always use that towel. It's nice and soft and fluffy. <sighs> or or I, I do know if you head on over to uh, Strings and Things with Juliana that she'd be happy to sell you some pillows. She'd probably be happy to sell you some basic supplies if there's anything else you need. She's, she's kind of got a little bit of everything. Otherwise, that's what the towel's for. Okay. You I guess I'll make do. <laughs> uh, Solar Solaris is rummaging through her, her explorer's pack. And she pulls out her bedroll, and she goes, they gave me one of these. I do not need it. Would you like my bed? Yes, a queen-size bed suited for a king. Thank you, Solaris. I, I, I'll happily take this. You are a good turtle, and I pat the shell. And she kind of, like, like melts in whatever way that she can. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to share the bedroll? Uh, um... <gasps> I thought you didn't need it. I, th I was in, under the understanding that I was, you were lending it to me. Do you I need it? Help, I can help keep you cold at night. Ah, uh, okay. That's, I think, a miscommunication between our species. I, I generally like to be warm at night. I know cold-blooded, a little different. I also know how to make fire. Okay, you can make the fire. Okay, I'll make the fire, and then we will share the bedroll. Oh, <laughs> let's let's walk. Let's think, you know. Let's walk and talk. Okay. Let's take it on the road. And he's kind of putting away his his Lego built symbol and is trying to end the conversation. <laughs> and Freya just reaches over and pats him on the shoulder and tries not to laugh while this whole debacle is going down. Oh boy! <laughs> and she's just like mad dog, and I'm just staring at him. <laughs> Marianne comes over to clean up the dishes, looks at you, Vance, and says, you can keep those. I haven't had any use for those things in, in a little while. So if it, you know, if it brings you joy, then it, it is yours. And it's a good-sized bucket, but it could fit in your backpack if you really want to take a bunch of uh, building Sweet. bricks with you. I will take building bricks. If I ever get another god, then I'll build that one, too. There you um, go. This will be my test to see if we have any sort of connection. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make anything out of a child's version of, of bricks? Yes. <laughs> wow, trying to avoid all kinds of copyrighted terms is very difficult. Anyway, yeah. she says... Yeah, I apologize for that. Is there, should I add <laughs> anything to this in my inventory on D&D Beyond or just got to... Um, you, know. you can go ahead and say a tub of building bricks and we'll know what that is. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to look at your character sheet with all this random stuff in it. Yeah. Anyway, Marianne cleans up all of the stuff and says, well, uh, I hope you come back soon. If there's anything else I can do for you, you you'll let me know. But it sounds like you're, you're on your way this morning to go, to go hopefully take care of this. Yes. Good, good luck and keep that towel with you. And she looks, you know, worried in that motherly type way, but she she gives you all kind of a nod and, and heads off. And you guys are heading out? Let's yep. do it, gang. We're out of here. Should we do like a one, two, three, you know, at the door sort of thing? Anyone, he puts his hand in the middle. And immediately Solaris puts her her, her paw on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> You're like curling the fingers a little bit. You're like, stop it. <laughs> Giant turtle claws. <laughs> And he looks to the rest of the group. What's the chant? On three? On two? On three. On three, on two, on one. Team, go! Team! team. <laughs> one, two, team. team! Team! We don't have a name yet, do we? We gotta we think don't. of something. I would love you all to roll performance checks. Oh, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Uh, my performance... Performance. Nine. Twelve. 
I have 12 plus. Do I have a thing? Yeah. You plus probably five, have a good 17. motive. 17. Okay. Pony Boy is used to performing and yes. gives it his all. The rest of you, it, it's, there's a good effort, but it's pretty obvious. You just met yesterday. So it's a little um, awkward, but you hear, yeah. you, almost the ends hear like, <laughs> you almost hear Mary Ann like give you a, a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> 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 she's, she's like, that's adorable. All right, and you guys head off? We're yeah. off. Let's do it. All right, I need someone to be the pathfinder for the group. So you guys have a basic map. Uh, but you're going to be roughing it through the woods, so I need someone who is willing to take the lead and decide, okay, we're going this way, and we're staying in this direction. Who would like to do that? Hmm. Wow, this is exciting. Everybody stands I outside like... of the end going, all right. <laughs> we all want, it's like a line. Who's like, good at being a pathfinder? Well, I think, I think Solaris feels comfortable in the woods. Like, she feels comfortable being outdoors, kind of surrounded by nature and stuff, but I think she's still nervous about leading the group. Okay. So she 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 wants to offer herself up, but she's nervous about it. Uh, Vance, yeah. So Vance is the opposite, where he wants to lead the group, but has no idea what he's doing. So, you know. uh, as as someone who's been in many a backwoods, I guess I'll lead you guys through this. I'll do it. Excellent. Okay. All right. All right. Vance hands the the book over to Freya so that she can look at this this rough map. I would love for you to roll. Um, Go ahead and roll me a perception Rockford. check. Perception. Do I? Oh, I got a natural 20. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Good leader. See the right. Yeah. Found nice. its place. What's the What's the total on that? I mean, uh, natural 20. I think still. I have a perception advantage. I could be wrong. I, what do I have an advantage on? Well, you can't roll a higher than 20. Right. So, can't roll a higher than 20. So, uh, so you look that up, but what's your number for now? Oh, it's just 21. And I only have plus one for perception. Okay. You are a little nervous about taking the lead, but you look down at the map, you look at uh, where the sun is, get your bearings, look out into the woods. They're not thick woods. They're not dangerous looking woods. And you are very confident in which way to go. And for the next couple of hours, you confidently lead everybody through the woods. Uh, you find a little bit of a game trail, which makes your walking a lot easier. And it's, it's kind of a dumpy day, but it's not too bad. It's gray and overcast and a little wet. And Solaris is probably very comfortable, but the rest of you are, are <laughs> shifting a little bit. Your clothes get a little bit wet, but certainly finding this game trail helps a ton. Uh, about halfway through the day, you stop, have a little bit of lunch. And as you keep going, I'd like for you to go ahead and roll another perception check. Okay. 17 plus one, 18. Yeah, rolling really well. So the rest of the day goes by as you are trooping through the woods. The, the map that you have doesn't really have that much in the way of, of directions or a marker. It's just kind of here is town, here is where this place is but you recognize uh, some, some bits of ruined stonework along the way that's leading you to believe that ruins might be nearby. You, you see some indications of that the wildlife has scattered, the, the trail that you've been following dies off, but you see little bits of like, oh, there used to be a house here, and now there's just kind of crumbled ruins. And so you get the sense that you're getting a lot closer to where you need to be. And uh, I'd love everybody now to roll a perception check. Rip, three, four. Uh, 13. Uh, six plus two, eight. Eight. Wow, okay. Uh, Solaris, you said you got a 13? Yes. Okay, the rest of you are a little distracted seeing these old, old signs of life, kind of wondering how long they've been here. Uh, wondering, you know, where exactly you're going, that you, you're seeing these old runes. Uh, Solaris, you hear a noise that seems to be coming from your right somewhere, and it's this weird... It kind of sounds like a very large hummingbird. Like if a hummingbird is like right by your ear, except it's far away and it's this... Do you guys hear that vibration? This ain't good. 
There's I don't want to know what you do. This way. As, I don't know what it is. As you look off in that direction, you see some large-ish things flying through the trees. As the, stun, the sun has started to set, the, the light through the trees is starting to get a bit dim, and you see these... At first, you think they might be bats, but the wings are moving way too fast, and they're kind of fluttering through the tree lines. There's maybe four or five of them, and that seems to be where the noise is coming from. I think it might be those things. Oh, shit. Do, are we going to hide or something? Uh, are those things dangerous? What are those things? They're, I don't Solaris, know. Solaris hears hide and just immediately jump and gets into her <laughs> shell. <laughs> Fuck, I don't have a shell. Oh God, I don't, great, <laughs> great. tries to put the shell great. on again. Listen, I'm not going to trust anything around these ruins, so I feel like we should get ready for a fight, whatever these things. I say we take cover. Can we take cover behind some trees? I'm with you, Pony Boy. Yeah, same. And from inside her shell, she's like, I'm in cover already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Solaris is going to duck into her shell. Uh, what are the three of you going to do? You guys you know, have a moment as you now see whatever these figures are starting to emerge from about 50, 60 feet away, and they're starting to very quickly come towards you. Take cover. I'm, I'm going to hide, can I hide behind a tree. Yeah. It, you it can looks try. like they see us, right? They're coming in your direction. Okay. Pony Boy, if you'd like to hide, I'd love you to roll a stealth check. Stealth check. Yeah. Oh, 19 plus stealth plus something plus three, 21 over 20. Yeah, you might be a very large dragonborn, but you find an even larger tree. And while you don't think you're completely hidden, you do get the sense that you've, you found a good piece of cover to duck behind. Vance, what did you want to do? That's, um, you know what? He's going to try the same, but like kind of. I think halfway through, he's like, I'm not going to be able to hide that well. And so he just kind of takes out his sword and gets ready to attack whatever is like close enough. Sure. And Freya, what would you like to do? You've got a can moment. Can I get up into a tree to hide in some thicker branches? You can certainly try to. Um, the trees around here have some lower branches. I'm going to need, I'm going to need an athletics check for you to try to climb a tree. Athletics? All right. Yeah, because you're trying to pull your way up into the tree. That is 13 plus 3, 16. Mm, yeah, you, you're able to get about 20 feet up into a tree. You just shimmy yes. up and grab from one place to another, and you're not too high up. But you, you managed to get actually a good vantage point that you now see these creatures. There's five of them weaving in between the trees. They're not massive. They're, they're actually kind of small. They're just large for flying creatures coming directly at you. They have these large leathery wings that are flapping incredibly quickly, almost like a, a very small bird or a hummingbird or something. And these long pointed noses that come to almost a needle sharp tip and as they weave through and beeline towards all of you we can all roll initiative oh my god right. i got 14. we have I four i also got 14. four plus three i got seven uh i got oh, wait, 12. I forgot to add my plus three so four two, 17. 17 all right and solaris 12. 12. All right. Good thing I'm behind a tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys, thanks to Solaris notice, noticing these things, you guys had a chance to kind of take a moment and ready yourself, but they're going to go first. Yeah. Master. They, okay. They roll super well. So um, as they come flying out of the tree line, swooping towards you, um, two of them angle up, heading for you, Freya, and they are going to attempt to stick you with their long, disgusting noses. How uh, oh, rude. First one is going to be an 11. I don't think that hits. Nope. And the second one is even lower. Does not hit. Suck it. <laughs> the, one of them is going to make a beeline for Pony Boy. Uh, does a 15 hit you? What's up, what's up, my armor? What is your yeah. armor class? 13. 
So 15 does hit you. So damn it, this damn tree. Like a giant <laughs> mosquito, its long nose finds a, a place between two of your scales, and you're gonna take uh, four piercing damage. Four. And, yeah, and <laughs> these long mosquito-like legs with pincers on the end of them, as it it manages to burrow its nose into you grasp onto your arm and it's what? now grappling onto your arm just starting to suck your blood oh uh, two of them are going to go after vance because none of them really know what to do with the giant turtle shell so <laughs> uh that's a 17. nope nope and much less than that okay so only one of them manages to find purchase on pony boy uh, but now you can guys, you, you guys all clearly see these disgusting creatures like overgrown horrific mosquitoes with bat-like wings just coming right at you. Uh, Freya, you are up in a tree. You've got two of them. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to try and stab the closest one with a dagger. Sure thing. Go for it. All right. I rolled a 19, and so that hits, I'm guessing. That's going to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. And then damage is a three. Nice. Or then plus three, so it's a six. Six. Okay. And the one that you stab, um, is this your 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 dagger? What would you use? Dagger, yeah. Your dagger? Yeah, you just get it kind of right in the space in between its neck and its body, and when mm -hmm. you withdraw, it it's stuck on the end of your dagger and you have to like shake it off and it falls to the ground dead. Can I use my second dagger on the other one? Absolutely. Rad. All right, that was a six plus three. Uh, that one misses. You, you, you're having to balance yourself in this tree and so you're just a little off balance as you go to, to stab out. Uh, would you like to do anything else? Uh... Is it possible to hop down out of the tree to get out of the way of this other thing, or am I am I stuck there for the time being? You can. If you move away from it, it's going to get an attack of opportunity. And oh, never mind. I will stay where I am. All right, you're going to hang out in the tree. Uh, Vance, you've got two of these things on you, flying around okay. in your face. Is uh, is there anyone within five feet of me? Um, I'll say that Pony Boy probably is, or not Pony Boy. I'm going to say uh, Solaris is probably her shell is right there because okay. you thought about hiding and then you went, ah, and so you really didn't move at all. So I'll say okay. Solaris's shell is sitting right there. Cool. All right. Good to know. Um, I will attack one of the two in front of me and sure. uh, yeah, we'll see how that does. Yeah. Okay. That is a 14 to hit. 14 does hit. All right. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, six damage, and I'm going to go ahead and pump a Holy Smite into it as well. Sure. Let's find Smite. Um, first time doing this, uh, is it a D6, or what do I actually... I don't see it in my list. Um, let's look it up just to make sure... Uh... Where's your divine smite? Divine sense, divine smite. Starting at second level, blah. The extra damage is two d8 for a first level spell slot oh, plus shit. one d8 for each spell slot higher. Are you casting it as a first level spell slot? Yeah, that's all I got. So all yes. Right. And then you get extra damages if it's an undead. Bleh. Let's try that again. Undead or a fiend. Uh, this thing is neither of those. So you just you get two d8 radiant damage. All right. I got a two. And seven, so nine. Nice. And this is your longsword? Yep. Yeah, you come down on this horrible flying creature. As you hit, your sword flares with bright white radiant energy and kind of flashes outward. And when it retracts after just the briefest of moments, what's left of this thing is a pile of goo on the, on the ground, and it's dead. Ah! That's it. <clears throat> Okay. I, I like the roar. Solaris, you are inside your shell and you, you hear Vance roar in triumph. 
<laughs> so with, with that noise, the, the roar, she pokes her head out and she sees Vance with a flaming sword and her heart melts inside. <laughs> uh, but uh, but she, see, she also sees Pony Boy with this thing lashed on to his arm. Um, can she get out of her shell and make an action or is, is that does that take up a whole action? I think getting out is a bonus action. Let's it says on your sheet. Uh, I know one of them's an action and one of them is a bonus. You can withdraw on your shell as an action. Uh, do, do, do. The only action you can take is ah, the only action you can take is a bonus action to emerge from your shell. So yes, you can emerge as a bonus action and then take an action to attack if you'd like. Okay, so she's gonna pop out of her shell and uh, lunge at the thing on Pony Boy's arm with with two swords. Sure. Going in. So that would be a. Let's see what I'm gonna throw. That's a twelve plus four, so sixteen. Yes, you absolutely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. So the first one, it's one d eight plus two. Got this thing. That's a three on the first one. And then do I swing, Do I have to roll again to see if it hits it with the second one? Yes, for the second All attack. Right, so, so the first attack hit with a three. Second attack is a 14. Uh, that also hits. All right, and then it does, ooh, 10 damage. Ooh, wow, yeah. Eight po plus two. Pony boy, you, uh, you're standing there in horror watching as this thing is attached to your arm, starting to suck out your blood, and all of a sudden there is a, a turtle there who <laughs> basically has to swing up in order to get at your arm, but neatly just cleaves everything right off of your arm without touching you, leaving just a couple of the legs attached before they too detach and fall off, and this thing is dead. Thank you so much. I was going to kill him myself, but I appreciate the help. Are you okay? I'm down four hit points. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little scathed, but I'm all right. And Pony Boy, it is your turn. Um, so I have the guy off me now, right? You do. There's one still floating around by Freya, and there's one still floating around by Vance. Can I jump to towards Freya and try to slice that one and in the air with my rapier? Sure, you're just trying to do like a jump and slash and and get down, or you're trying to climb the tree. Yeah, no, I'm just kind of jump and see. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm nine inches taller, so I might be able to <laughs> this is true. Go up and swipe it down, yeah, and cut that's through true. its body. We should we should figure out how tall you are totally, <laughs> but but yeah, go ahead and give I'm me. I'm like six nine now, I think. Or yeah. I'm six nine. I'm like an NBA player. <laughs> you're better than an NBA player. You're you're you're, you're massive. Um, I'm massive. Yeah, because Dragonborn are pretty strong. Yeah, big. Like, so I'm like a big I, old. Um, I'm a beat. Go ahead and give me an athletics check. check. Yeah, just give me an athletics check to see as you run over if you can jump high enough to slash at it. So you right. mean dunk it. <laughs> Seven. Any, 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 plus three, ten. Uh, you take a nice running leap at it and... Sh uh, Freya is about 20 feet up in this tree, and so it's flying kind of um, level with her. And you just barely nick it with your sword. Like, if if maybe you had jumped a little higher or maybe grown another foot, then maybe, but it's <laughs> just out of your reach. So you, you, you land. I say, Freya, I tried. <laughs> I just I... shake my head. Would you like to do anything as a bonus action? Um... Uh, what can I do? I think, I well, don't know. You are a bard, so you always have the option to inspire people with your bardic inspiration. Oh yeah, and that lasts for a while, right? Well, it's 10 minutes, uh, so it hangs we'll, out for a little while. We'll inspire, we'll inspire Freya. I said, sorry I missed, but here's some inspiration. Yeah, that works. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So you can mark down. You have a D6 that you can use on your next uh, attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Cool. And it is the awful creature's turn. There are still two of them around. One of them is still flitting about by Vance, um, but is going to completely whiff. It, it was a little freaked out, it seemed, by the total liquidation of its fellow. And, and the roar. Don't forget the roar. Sure, and the roar. 
<laughs> also the liquidation, but yeah, both of it. Yeah. So it seems to be cautiously still attacking you as it... The other one up by Freya was unfazed by the Dragonborn uh, jumping around below it and going to go after you again. Uh, 14 versus AC? I am 14. Ah, then it does hit. It no! leaps forward, flies forward. It does five piercing damage as it attaches to your chest and manages to get, get you right by the oh. clavicle. And you now have a, a needle sharp thing, uh, nose sticking into the side of your neck. And it's disgusting. Um, and you do, all of you here, more of these things coming as four more seemingly drawn by the sound of battle and the the call to more blood like mosquitoes do swarm out and they're going to fly towards you guys um <sighs> one of them is going for pony boy two of them are headed for solaris and one of them is going for vance but it's going to take all of their movement to get to you guys so they don't get a chance to attack uh, Freya, you have a disgusting giant mosquito bat thing clinging to your front. Well, I'd like to stab it in the face. Go for it. <laughs> All right, 14 plus five. 19 absolutely hits. Wonderful. And I have inspiration, right? Uh, yes. So you can't add that to damage. You can add that to... Oh. Uh, so for the the attack rolls, if you roll and you take a look mm -hmm. at the number on the die and you go, ah, I don't think so, you can add your d6 to it before you tell me the number. Gotcha. Uh, but not but not after I tell you if it hits or not. And then you gotcha. can also add that to an, a saving throw or an ability check. Same kind of thing. You roll first, you take a look at what's on the d20, and you go, yeah, I think I'll add my inspiration. But Wonderful. I will roll for attack. That hits. That that uh, roll you did definitely hit, so go ahead and do damage. All right, damage is four plus three. And so seven. Yeah, it's still there. It's still clinging to you, but you take mm -hmm. a, a chunk out of its top, and it's it's got one of those um, little tiny... It's got all those little tiny hairs on top of it that, like, arachnids have, and so oh. you kind of just slice into it, and it's it looks hurt, but it, it seems to cling to you harder when you do that. Can I use my other dagger to try and kill this gross thing? Would you please? 10 plus 5, 15. 15 does it. Go Yay. ahead and hit it again. 3 plus 3, 6. Please die. <laughs> As you say, please die, it dies. It listens to you, and it falls to the ground <laughs> in a couple of pieces. Uh, would you like to do anything else? Uh be incredibly disgusted by the bug guts and gross hairs all over me. <laughs> As you should. Vance, you've got two of these things, once again, in your face. Like mosquitoes, they're annoying. <laughs> uh, and I go and detect the one to left of me again. I, I don't know if I have anything special. I mean, besides smiting. Uh, how far are we in our journey in terms of, like, uh, length? Like, what, you know, since when we left? You think that if... Freya's been doing a good job of directing you that you've got to be close. The You were told by York that this is about a day's journey away, and it's getting towards dusk. So oh, okay. you, you don't think that you, you're very far, but you don't so know exactly if, where you're going. So if we would camp, we'd camp around the ruins or maybe a little bit further. That would be uh, up yeah. to you. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'll just attack the, the one to the left of me. Sure. All right. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eight. Eight. Uh, you spend a little bit of time thinking too much about the future. Going, hmm, I wonder if we're going to camp tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, I must yeah. attack these things. <laughs> and you miss. Yeah, I'm like making sure I like, did I, did I get that bedroll from Solaris? It, and I, I want to make sure I'm comfortable. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do anything else? Uh, is there anyone within five feet of me still? Um... Solaris. I know Solaris moved. Uh, no, I'm going to say Solaris and Ponyboy are about 10 feet away, and Freya is 20 feet up a tree. Okay. Uh, I'll stick where I am for now, um, but I'll shout to everyone else, if you need some help, I can, I can take them on. I got big armor. That's about it. <laughs> Which he <laughs> says as he is waving a giant sword at two and bugs missing, in his face. Uh, missing terribly. Solaris, it's your turn. You also now have two disgusting mosquito bat things in your face. 
so uh, she pulls her sword. No one messes with my friends. And then she just lunges at both of them, like one per one sword per flying thingy. I love it. All right. So uh, let's see. It's plus four to hit. Come on. That is a 13. That will just miss. Just. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're trying to do kind of both at the same time, do this cool maneuver, and, yeah. and you like graze half of a wing and don't find purchase. And the second one. That is, ooh, that is a 21 total. That definitely hits. You alter your other swing just in time and, and get it right in the forehead. All right, and then I got uh, D8 plus two, so that is a four. Excellent. You hurt it really bad, but it, it is still in your face. Anything else? And she's very mad. Uh, no, she just, at this point, she's just happy that Pony Boy is okay. And that more less of his blood has not been taken from his body, and she's just hell bent on killing these things. <laughs> Speaking of Pony Boy, it is your turn. There's another one now in your face, but you got Solaris next to you fighting off the other two. Okay. Um, can I cast a spell? Is it? Is it? Is yeah. It, what kind of spell? I hit fairy fire. Can I hit most of? Can I hit, can I hit them all with fairy fire or no? Uh, what is the the range on fairy fire? You could probably get a 60, couple of them. Sixty foot. Sixty foot is how far. Uh, that's your actual. Foot? Area. Ah, 20 foot. So you could get um, all three of the ones next to you and Solaris, or you could get the two that are on Vance. Oh, and I think that's it. Yeah, because Freya killed the, the ones that are near her. So um, to get the most of them, you could get the three that are like I get right three. I'm going to try to hit three. Okay. Put my fairy fire. All right. Uh, and that is a dexterity saving throw, I believe. Do, do, do. Fails a dexterity saving throw. What is the DC that? Thir Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, the one that's gonna fail. Roll the same thing and it's gonna fail. Oh, the one on you actually manages an eighteen. So one of them succeeds, but the two that are on Solaris, you you cast your fairy fire, and like before, when you were in York's tower, little tiny motes of light expand out. What was what was the color of your fairy fire again? It was blue. Yeah, I believe. wonderful blue, little tiny fuzzy lights appear. And at first they just kind of expand in this area around you and then they all seem to just cling to the two that are on Solaris. The third one manages to kind of duck and dodge out of the way. So any attack rolls against the two that are on Solaris have advantage. So that, that will definitely help. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, that's it, I think. All right. We're back to the ugly bug monsters. Um, Pony Boy, the one that's on you. Hmm. Uh, I think a 24 hits you. Ooh. Yeah. You are only going to take uh, four piercing damage, but you now have a uh, the one that was on you that manages to duck out of the way of your fairy fire. As it ducks, it goes low, and it attaches to your hip, and you feel the sting enter right and at your hip, and... It is an uncomfortable thing. Uh, the two that are on Vance, uh, one is totally going to miss. The other rolls a natural 20. Mm. So you are going to take three, four. You're going to take seven piercing damage. And now mm -hmm. you've got one attached to your side that is just jabbed right in trying to find your kidney. Uh, the one, or the two that are on Solaris. Does a 17 hit you? I am a 17, so yes, that would yeah, hit. Just hits. So that's six piercing damage, and it, it kind of gets you in the shoulder by the neck. The other one only rolls an eight, so that one misses. And they are done. Freya, you are up a tree. Yes. Uh, is leaping out of a tree, That's an act, is that my whole action? Well, that'll be your movement. If you'd like to try to not take damage as you jump 20 feet out of the tree, I would like an acrobatics check. Or you could right. decide to climb down and be a little careful about it, but it'll be pretty much all of your movement to get to the bottom of this tree. Nah, I'm going to leap. All right, give me that athletics check. <laughs> Wonderful, I'm 13 jump. plus 5, 18. Yeah, you... Ooh, all the lights just went off in here. It got very creepy. Um... <laughs> 
you manage to only take two damage as you jump out of this tree and land, but you do land on your feet, kind of hard, and mm -hmm. you can still move if you would like. Where would you like to go? Uh, who has taken the most damage so far? You. I mean, <laughs> by the by the evil flappy things. I think we've all been hit once except for you. Or no, yeah. you got hit, didn't you? I got hit once, yeah. Yeah, so we've all taken one hit. All right. I'm going to go okay. try and kill this thing on Vance because he got hit pretty hard. Okay. He's got one attached to him and the right. other one flying about, um, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. So go ahead and, and run on up and um, you will, if you do hit, you do get sneak attack since he is next to them. So go ahead and make an attack. Okay. So I rolled a natural 20. Wow. wow. <laughs> Roll it. Roll it. So <laughs> it's fun today. Very nice. All right. Uh, so for sneak attack, what do I roll for that? So you normally would roll uh, 1d4 for your dagger. Okay. And then okay. for your sneak attack, I believe it is 1d6. Yep, you would roll 1d6. Because you have crit, you get to double the dice. So you get to roll 2d4 and 2d6. On just this one bug? On just this one bug. <laughs> OK, well, the Critical first... hits are fun. Seriously, so that was two, and then I rolled a three, so five plus three, so that's eight, and then my sneak attack. Yeah. And that's a d6, you said? Yep, and so you get to roll that twice. Three. Bring the pain. Six, Whoa. and. And then yeah, you three. add your modifier, which is plus three. Yep, so what's the total? Uh, it was five plus. There was a six in there. There's Six. a lot in there. So that's 11. And then I rolled a three. That's 14. And then plus another three. Guys, help me out. I'm bad at math. 12 and 5. 17. 17. 17. You liquefy this thing. You, <laughs> even though it's one strike, it's like a Zorro strike, and where you're like, <laughs> and just pieces of it fall to the ground, <laughs> just completely demolished. Um, and that was one hit. Would you like to use a bonus action? I would like to try and hit the other one. Sure. This is the one that's attached to him. Go ahead and roll yes. another attack. Oh, I rolled a three. That one. Don't hit me. You're trying to be <laughs> cautious about not hitting Vance. And even though you just had this super impressive kill on one of these crazy mosquito things, like mm -hmm. it's attached to him. And you're trying to be cautious. And so you just go a little, little too wide. I tried. <laughs> All right. Uh, Vance, it is your turn. Um, at the start of, yeah, so at the beginning of your turn, this thing that is attached to your side, you feel it and uh, you take four or five, seven points of damage as okay, it. Okay, now I'm gonna hurt before I was okay. Now no longer, this really stings. <laughs> as like a mosquito does, it has started to suck your blood and you see kind of the fuzzy part of its abdomen, you see it turn darker. Yep. Well, but it is your turn, what would you like to do? Yeah, I'm gonna get the thing off me the best I can. I'm gonna try and, I guess, can I cut it with my long sword? Probably. Can Could you be. bite it and drink the blood? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All of these are options. What would you like to do? Back. Um, I don't think he's a blood drinker yet, unless he draws like, you know, a vampire god. We'll see what, <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> So I think he'll try to cut it off with his longsword. Sure. All right, that should hit. That's a 24. It definitely hits. Go, go ahead and describe to me how you attack this thing attached to your side with a longsword. I think he'd like, he's kind of grossed out. So he's like, Ugh, and he's just kind of poking at the big fleshy sack and trying to pierce it. Um, <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll that. Unhand my blood. And he. <laughs> unhand my blood. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. That was nine damage. Nice. Uh, whatever it had sucked up into you spills onto the ground as you, you manage cool. to kind of, you grab the sword by the hilt and you turn it around and you stab this way and shish kebab this thing. And so when you pull the sword back, it falls over onto the ground and it feels a little gross, but it is dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone else need help? 
Uh, Solaris still has two on her, and Ponyboy still has one flying about him. All right, Vince going to head over to Solaris. All right, as Vance does that, Solaris, it's your turn. You've got two of these things still, is it two? Yeah, you still got two of these things flying about you, but they are now glowing in a blue light, giving you advantage. All right, so same deal. She still has two swords. She's going to try to hit either of them with one one swing per each. Sure. And I have advantage on both, so. You do. All right. All uh, the D20s. That is a 14. That just barely hits. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. Should I, should I roll the advantage roll just to see if I get a nat or anything? You should absolutely always crit fish. Always, always. Yeah. Crit Four, fish 14 yeah. was the better. So, <laughs> uh, And then that hits for uh, 1d8 plus 2. That hits 7. Nice. You um, you almost miss, but the shimmering lights that Ponyboy had summoned kind of hone in your, your stab. And this is the one that was hurt, and you managed to take off one of its wings, and it falls over dead. Nice. And then uh, let's swing at the other one now. That is a natural 20. Hey! Hey! hey. All right. <laughs> All right, then I'll roll the advantage. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I All would right. like to so double crit. Uh, so I get 2d8 plus 2 then? Yep. If, if you normally the... roll 1d8, now you get 2d8. Nice. All right, so that was an 8 plus 2, so that's 10. <laughs> And then uh, a seven plus two and nine, so nineteen damage. So you only add the modifier the once. Um, so, but it's still seventeen damage. Plenty of damage to kill this thing. Um, once again, the the shimmering lights around it just draw your eye. And while the other one you got its wing, this one you just get straight through, uh, kind of the top of its head, and it's, and then you just shake it off nonchalantly, and both of them are dead. Anything else? Uh, she just turns back to uh, Pony Boy and says, "Thank you. You helped save my life." And Pony Boy, it is your turn. You've got the last of these disgusting mosquito bats on you. What would you like to do? Um, I'm gonna slice at it with my rapier. Sure. So, uh, this is not good. This is a one. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. This is a one plus. Do I have to add anything to it? It doesn't help. Nothing helps here. <laughs> no, sadly, on an attack, when you roll a natural one, what happens is I describe something um, vaguely embarrassing, which is in this case, Solaris looks at you after thanking you for your help. You've watched her completely demolish these two. You pull out your rapier with a flash and you, you strike a pose and go to stab it in one kind of heroic motion, except. It's to your left, and you stab to the right. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> Embarrassing. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I think uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm a little scared it's going to attack me, so I think I kind of slide and try to hide behind a tree real quick. Because uh, he might hit me. Is there something for me to kind of there's... You hide behind me? Duck behind <laughs> in case it attacks me right now. If you do move away from it, it will get an attack of opportunity on you, which means it'll get a chance to lash out at you. And you would know this, so it's up to you whether you want to take that chance or not. No, no, I'm going to just stand there. All right. I'm going to stand there and look at it. You're going to stand there and glare at it as it is the last one. It is. And Solaris, like, points, like, like pointing the other direction. Uh, does anybody else want to try to hit this guy? <laughs> I'll take it. And they, they come rushing towards you, but... It's its turn, so it's going to get a chance to stick your with its nose again. Uh, but I don't think a 14 hits you? Me? Yeah. It, it does. I'm 13. Ah, uh, mm. all right. Mm. Well, sadly, you take five piercing damage. As, Damn it! Um, you had stabbed off to the right, it had flown to the left, and it um, flies around behind you and attaches to the back of your head. <sighs> It's in my head. Yeah, it, it kind of it actually sticks you kind of down the back, but it's sitting on the back of your head. And Freya, you arrived just it's in time. Spine, you guys, it's in my spine. <laughs> you arrived just in time to see this thing stabbing Pony Boy. All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna definitely try and slice at it. I'm I'm gonna try and like poke it off with a short sword this time because I have one of those. Sure. All right. Nope. That's four plus five. That's only a nine. Nah, uh, it's once again you're trying to be super careful because you know Pony Boy's head is right there. Also, right. he's like two feet taller than you, so right. it's. If 
but no. <laughs> this is not good. This Anything? is not good, y'all. This is what you get for being cocky. <laughs> this Anything is a else? hell of a mosquito bite right now. A <laughs> hell of a mosquito bite. Anything else? And uh, that's all I can do. All right, Vance. You see Vance your dragonborn gonna... friend in trouble. He's going to try and get a running jump and go, ha ha, and like leap up with the sword and try to cleave it in half. Sure. Give um, me an attack. All right. OK. Uh, 17. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. OK. Uh, OK, it was only a four. Has this thing been hit before? Probably not. This one has so. not. Oh, OK. Four total? Four total, but I don't want to look lame after that cool move, so I'm going to put another Divine Smite into it to try to finish <laughs> it off. Sure. I was going to have you roll an athletics check to see, or an acrobatics. I'll let you pick to see how cool that maneuver really is. Okay. Should I do the Divine Smite first and then the acrobatics? or? Uh, give, me, give me the roll first. So either an athletics or an acrobatics check. Okay. I'll let you choose depending on what flavor of cool you want. Okay. Uh... What'd you get? I got. I rolled a six, and I think with athletics, that's a nine. Okay. So. It's it's not a bad jump. You don't embarrass yourself or anything. You definitely hit this thing, but it's definitely a little cooler in your head than what everybody else sees. As is everything. Vance is totally cool in his head. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead and pump some divine smite into this thing. Hell yeah! All right. It's a one and a four, so five. Well. That is actually enough to kill it, so go ahead and describe in gory detail the death of this I think Sturge is what they are. Vance will have that running jump, and in his mind, he's going like clean through it and like does like three-point landing. What probably happens is, I mean, Ponyboy is tall, so he has to like really kind of jump to get up there, so he kind of does a jump, kind of like cuts a portion of it off, and it's like not really a clean cut, and it's probably like, you know, bleeding and really gross. <laughs> and then he kind of like, falls a bit on his shoulder and like kind of falls down a bit, but picks himself up quickly and makes sure no one was looking, which they should probably were, but he doesn't, he doesn't believe they were. Well, they're all looking at you, but you did manage to kill it. And as you guys right. take a moment, as the sun is starting to, to go down in this forest that a moment ago seemed to just be a regular old forest. And, and now you are all, all covered in blood because, you know, these things are bloody and gory and there are just, bodies of these huge bat things lying everywhere but you are successful um and as you take this moment i'd like you all to roll perception checks 12 plus 16 plus uh 16. 16. i threw a one then plus four so five you're still you have 18. 18 and freo what'd you get 13. Okay. Um, everybody but um, Solaris, who is intently looking over Vance to make sure he is okay. because She's looking at his, pile, his puddle of blood. Like, huh? huh. <laughs> Just making sure. She's, she's totally making sure that the blood is of this creature and not, not for Vance. Uh, but the rest of you, as you kind of take a moment and gather yourselves and look around and kind of reorient yourself, knowing that you're, you're going to be leaving again, you do see that you've, you've made it a little further into some of these ruins. Uh, there, there are more of these stone bits lying everywhere. You, you get the sense that this was a bit more of a town at some point than it was a forest. Mm -hmm. And Freya, you think as you pull back out the book and, and, and take a look, you've got to be pretty close to where you want to go. Um, mm -hmm. But it's up to you whether you guys want to continue or do something else. Um, Vance looks through us and he's like, oh, that was so gross. And he, he takes out the, uh, the towel and like starts, uh, wiping himself with it to hopefully clean up a bit of the blood. And he's like, I really need some rest after that. I don't know about you guys, but I've, they really got me bad. They got me bad too. Should we take a short rest? Cause I only have six hit points left. They bit me twice. I'm good with a short rest. How about you? Well, to Solaris. who am I napping next to? You can nap yes. next to whoever you want. And she just immediately looks at Vance. Oh. <laughs> um, let's check out the town first. How about that? Make sure it's all kosher. Or, the, you know, this 
this ruined town, whatever. Can we, can we, we want to, maybe there's loot, huh? And he starts taking off in that direction. <laughs> well, at the moment, it's not really a town. It's just like the decrepit Ruins. remains of what looks like um, stone buildings from centuries ago. It, okay. It's just kind of giving you the sense that Freya has successfully led you in the right direction. And so you're pretty sure looking around in this area, maybe continuing to go south, you, you can't be far from this ruined temple that you've been sent towards. But gotcha. it's up to you whether you would like to just continue on or take a short rest here. I think we take that rest. Okay, I'm going to take a rest. Well, take what, a rest. do we want to nap? It is nighttime or less. You know, I'm kind of a morning guy myself. So... Take a nap. Cuddle like into that shell. You. Vance, cuddle into that shell a little bit. The shell keeps you nice and cool. <laughs> if you just need to uh, get some hit points back, if you do take a long rest, you guys can roll hit dice. And with... Um, well, I have song of rest, too. On a short rest, I have song of rest. Yeah, so you guys would get some extra healing. So if you are if you just want to get some healing done before you leave, you, you don't have to take a long rest. And it is... The sun hasn't gone down yet. You, you think you still have another, like, hour or two before it even starts to get dark. Okay. So we could say take a short rest and. All right. Back. Short rest it is. Sounds you? good to me. Yeah, All sounds right. good to me. Pony boy, are you gonna sing a song of rest as everybody kind of sits down? Yeah, I can pull out my off? little lute and I play a little. We <laughs> killed a bunch of mosquitoes and I got bitten twice, but we need to heal a little. And uh, I don't know. He just he's just freestyling a little on his lute, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Not only do all of you get the extra healing from the song rest, uh, Pony Boy, I'm going to give you inspiration for that. I'm going to give you. Dang so you get you get advantage on one of your D20 rolls coming up because that was awesome. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. nice. All so, right. so what do we roll for uh, for healing? So it depends on uh, who you are. Uh, since you guys are all level two, you get two hit dice. You don't have to roll them. You can roll one and see how much health you get back and decide to roll the second. Because of Pony Boy, you also get, I think we decided, we saw it was a D6. Uh, Bardic Inspiration. Pony Boy, what is your what does your Song of Rest do? 1D, it says 1D8 at ninth level, 1D10 at 13th. We're not there, so I don't you know are. it. What does it say right at the beginning? Uh, oh, 1D6 points. Uh, each of these creatures regains an extra 1D6 hit points. Yep, so okay. depending on your class, you can roll your hit dice, you'll add your constitution modifier, and you'll also get a D6 thanks to Pony Boy. All right. So that's so, three plus two. So the yeah, hit, hit die isn't like points, uh, we, we roll what on hit points? Um, for you, Pony Boy, since you are a bard, you will get. I think yours is probably, let's see, because it's going to be different if, if you actually press short rest on your D&D Beyond, it'll tell you. Uh, so for you, Pony Boy, it's a D8. So you can roll a D8, add one for your constitution modifier, and you you do get your song of rest hit points. Oh, I get well. D8, not D4. My bad. Ooh, I get a 1D10. Yeah, most of, most of you are probably D8. Yeah, Solaris is probably a D10. Vance might be a D10. Plus. Oh, I got an 8. I got an 8. Awesome. You rolled an so, eight? Yep. Yep. So and then eight. I get to also add the D6 as well? Yep. So it's going to be your D8 plus your D6 plus your constitution modifier. All right. I that's six plus two, which is 18, which means I'm back to full health. There you yeah. go. And plus All right. The six, right? So I got, uh, I rolled a one, and then plus one. So I got two there. And then I rolled the 1D6 for yep. the addition. For, right. for Pony Boy's lovely song. And then four, so I got six total, which I think that's all I took, so that's perfect. Uh, I did okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, I did this and did this and this, and Vance is like, eh, mm. you know. It's that's, all right. I'm still a little bruised, but. Whatever. I, I'm, I, back at, I'm back at full health here. You myself. can decide to roll both of your hit dice if you want. I did, I did. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm so sorry. That's not good. That happens. You got a one and a two. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Well, you spend an hour listening to, to Pony Boy just improving on that lute. You guys bind your wounds a little bit. The, the sun continues to, to go down a little bit more, but you're feeling a little bit better, a little well rested now, and um, if you guys are going to continue, what I need, Freya, if you would like to give me another perception check. You got it. 
That is a 12 plus 1. 13. Okay. Um, so you definitely know which direction south is, and you kind of head there, not exactly sure with all of these bits of stone, if, if they're an indication of anything. And for the next hour, as, as you're starting to think, oh, I'm not sure if we're going to get close to this thing, um, you, you wind your way through, you get kind of to the top of this hill and come down a little bit more, and then you all very clearly hear as she leads you down this hill to um, a little bit of a clearing coming up where you see some more of these, this stonework, this old, old stonework. You hear what sounds like knocking. You hear do, 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 like hammering. It's the master. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what is that? It does seem to be coming Wait. from the direction you're going. Vance hears that and he's like, that might be my god. I he he works with with uh, with hammers. This is stonesmith, and I had a dream about them talking to me. I I gotta check this out. Anyone coming with? No. Okay, I'm going. And then I just <laughs> walk off. <laughs> All right, Vance uh, marches happily off to the south into the woods. You see him just big grin on his face, head off in that direction. Um, Vance, after just a few moments of getting through the underbrush, you kind of burst through into a little bit of a clearing where you see a the ruins of a large building, what might have actually been a temple at some point, but it is left to rot from centuries. The only thing that is obvious to you, uh, besides there are just these bits of stone pillars that look like they might have gone up to maybe a second floor, you do see a gate which looks brand new has been set up just gleaming silver and there's a there's a figure standing next to this gate he's got a wooden sign in his hands and you you hear that the banging is actually coming from him trying to drive a nail through this wooden sign into the um the mortar of this old stone work and he's kind of cursing under his breath he's a he looks to be a human about your height, but he's just wearing some tattered robes. He's got the hood down on his cloak, and you can see messy brown hair. And he's just pounding away on this nail. Dish, 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 dish. Oh, bloody hell. Dish, 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 dish. Can I see what the sign says? Yeah, you move around to the side. You can see in large block leather letters, it says, under construction. Temple coming soon. I, I walk up to the figure and I say, is this the, the Temple of Gond? Are you building oh. the Temple of Gond? Oh. Hello, I'm Vance. Hello. Oh, I'm, uh, oh, hi. This is exciting. You're here for the temple. Yes. He, and so the gentleman that turns to you, he's got this bright smile on his face. He looks gaunt and pale and like he hasn't had a good meal in a very long time, but he is, seems so super happy to see you and he kind of drops his hammer in a in a little bit of a fright and he says oh excellent i no i'm sorry we're not open just yet we're, as you, we're still under construction the, the mortar is still drying in a couple places i haven't even finished the lower levels but uh, how did you hear about us i haven't even sent out the newsletter well and he he looks to the to the skies and he says i'm great at construction and he picks up the hammer and he and he tries to hammer in the sign to show the guy that he's a great worksman, that he's a very devout follower Excellent. of go, Gond. Go he still and, thinks this is the Temple of Gond. <laughs> go ahead and give me a strength check. What are the rest of you doing while he rolls that? As uh, he's just beelined for this place. I think Solaris like kind of took it. She didn't realize she was like, what, like he just beelined, so she just followed after him after he kind of cleared through the brush. And the rest of you? I follow, I follow suit. I follow the turtle. Yeah, just sigh and follow everybody because I'm not going to stay in these woods alone. All right. You guys, after kind of this momentary shock of, of Vance just marching off into the woods, follow a few feet behind. And so you're there to see him walk up and greet the stranger and then start to hammer in this sign. Uh, Vance, what was your, your strength? 22. Check? Yeah. Uh, poof, poof. And it's under construction opening soon is now very clearly in, in white paint on this sign uh, next to this bright 
brand new gate on what looks like to be a ruined temple. And the, the gentleman is super pleased. And he says, oh, this is amazing. You, and so you were, you were also sent. This is. I this had is, a vision <gasps> as well. She's, I assume you did. Otherwise, they wouldn't be calling multiple people. She spoke directly to you. She? Yes, Bathsheba. You said you were here to help. She hasn't actually <sighs> spoken directly to me. I've been having to talk through this. He is so crestfallen. Yep. Is it Bathsheba Temple? And he turns to the rest of you and he says, well, it, it um, ruin, dungeon? I guess it's not done yet. We're hoping to be a multi-purpose facility. See, I, the upper level's mostly for prayer and the lower level's mostly for killing people. But the, a lot of the lower levels aren't actually finished yet. As, as I was telling your friend, we're still under construction. It's going to be at least a couple more weeks, maybe maybe up to three or four, ten day. But if I can get your, your names and if, if you'd like, I'll get you attached to my Sending Stone newsletter and we'll, I'll definitely let you know when we're open. And he pulls out like a little tiny notebook and flips through a couple of pages and a little quinn. He's like, uh, so what was what was your name again? What was your name, man? Oh, uh, well, my name is uh, Piada. Well, I'm the one who's helping build this whole thing. My name is Solaris. It's very Don't nice to meet you. Don't your name, Solaris. Well, that is but the she only- asked our names. Yeah, this is the only way that I can get you on the mailing list for when the, the whole thing opens. So long. Is that spelled with two L's or one L? No one has ever asked me that. Well, I'm glad to be the first. And he he marks something down and says, okay, Solaris, and the, the rest of you? While he's marking things down, I want Vance to walk behind him, still holding the hammer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, Go ahead and roll a deception check, because you're you're not really hiding. You're just trying to be like do do do. Um, twenty, eighteen plus two. Wow. Um, he is still very intent on Solaris, and so you can't quite get behind him because he was standing like the two of you were standing next to this wall. But you can definitely move to the side of him. So, um, and he he doesn't seem to care or mind or move. Um, you do see that in the notebook that he's pulled out that he has in, in very large friendly letters written down, Solaris, with two L's. Uh, <laughs> as I see Vance moving with this hammer in his hand with intent, can I uh, slowly but surely shift that way and kind of reach for a weapon very subtly just in case he's as well? Go ahead and also roll a deception check. What are the rest of you doing while while I they... have sixteen plus four, so twenty. All right. He he does notice you. you you're able to shift a little bit, and you put your hand mm -hmm. on your weapon. You haven't done anything overt yet, but like he's been looking at Solaris as he, right. oh, it's one L or two, and then he kind of eyes you as you move, and then looks at you and says, "Oh, and I, what was your name? I'm sorry, I was going to get your name down too." Shannon. Shannon, and is that what three ends or four? Seven. Seven. That's a lot of ends. Oh, family and, name. Okay. No, I understand. Uh, my family name has some weird things in it. Okay. I the, think I want one L. You, okay, whichever. It's your name, certainly. Uh, it just, will help with the sending. And uh, just one L. Just one L. Okay. And Vance, you see him. <laughs> he doesn't actually rewrite the name. He just scribbles out the one L. So now it says Salar Scribble Is. Uh, and he looks at you, Pony Boy, and this this robed, brightly smiling, very gaunt-looking figure says, "Oh, and sir, what was what was your name? Were you interested in signing up for the newsletter?" And then and, and then Pony Boy goes into performance mode. And, okay. And he tends to be, I mean, he doesn't know who this guy is, but he's like, "I, I'm a prince, dragonborn from the land afar. These are my squires and." Those to protect me. We are here in search of uh, new gods in temples. We 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 need to know who you worship at this place. Go ahead and roll a deception check. Unless some of that is true. <laughs> None of that is true. I didn't think most of that seemed like a deception. No, that's true. Would I, am I my D twenty? Yep. Roll your D twenty and add your deception, which is. Oh, not good. This is, I got I got plus four on three. All right. Um, he seems 
fascinated. He says, really, my lord, my liege, my my uh, dragon? Lord, lord works, lord works. Lord, excellent. Well, as, as I said, this is going to be a multi-purpose facility to Bathsheba. We've uh, just had the rededication ceremony, me, myself, and I. Really, n nobody else. I mean, unless you count the zombies, but I don't really, because they don't, all they do is, they don't really say anything, uh, but the actual official opening is probably not happening for another couple of weeks, and we're certainly, we would love to have you here for the first, the first run through of everything. I would need you to sign a non-disclosure agreement if you're going to come through. I need to make sure that if you do survive all of the traps, that you don't actually tell anybody how to solve them, because, you know, it, it ruins the mystique and the mystery for anybody else coming through the dungeon. Hmm. Can we get a tour of these dungeons? Oh, oh, when it's finished, of course. I, I certainly wouldn't want you to see it now, some of the lower levels. The state that they're in is just... I wouldn't feel comfortable. It would d definitely not be, and she, or he looks back at you, Vance, as he says this. He says, it would not be uh, good to, to show all the inner workings. I mean, we want to put our best foot forward for, for Bathsheba, correctly? I mean, uh, do you agree? Did you, all, you said you were here for the same god, right? Yep. You could just write down Prince John on that paper. That's totally fine. Prince John. Yes. Mm, my, my lord. Yes, definitely. Oh, excellent. And thank you for your help with that. Okay. Uh, well, I'll definitely get you on the sending newsletter. And well, did you have any other questions or else I should really get back to work? There's so much to do. Stuccoing takes so long. So, Lars, just, you're, you're a prince? God. Yeah. You mentioned zombies. Yes. Who, you have zombies here? Well, definitely not as many as we did before. I had to clear out a whole bunch of them in order to make room. You'd be surprised. Actually, you might not be surprised how many that there are in a in a place like this. Are you making the zombies? Well, I've made a couple, of course. Zach, I have to fancy some on top of the head. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll an attack. <laughs> um, do I add anything to the roll? Am I, am I proficient with the with the tool? Sure, I'd say. I mean, it's a hammer. As a yeah, as like a hand. Yeah. Yeah, you're a you're a paladin. You're proficient with most martial weapons. I was gonna say a hammer. You're pretty proficient with. Sure. Right. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen actually doesn't hit you. Oof. You Oof. go to strike him with the hammer, and you're going for the back of the head, and instead you you whiff a little bit, and it comes really close, and Piodar goes. <gasps> Oh, how rude. <laughs> and then you see him <laughs> disappear. Oh. And Damn it. there's this weird brimstone smell that gets left behind. And I need you all to roll perception checks. 13 plus 14. 11 plus 2. 16. 16 for me. 4. Well. Vance, you are just super... Um, embarrassed whiffing on this hammer and so all you can see is the ground where this guy was the rest uh. of you smell this weird and there's almost like a, a whiff of smoke left behind and you notice through the gate this this brand new gate on these crumbling ruins um about 20 30 feet away he he reappears in a flash of of smoke and he looks annoyed and rushes off, but at the same time that he starts to rush off, the plant life that's around this brand new gate suddenly moves. And the three of you notice that the vines that were creeping up the sides of this, of this the ruins of this temple that has this brand new gate on it, um, the vines start to curl and wrap tighter and a couple of the flowers come into view and two of the bushes that were right next to the gate, they shake a little bit and then kind of move and spring to life and turn into these large creatures made of plants with mouths that have thorny vines in them. And we can all roll initiative again. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, 15 plus 3, 18. Five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to do some rolling. 
Ah, well, they're going to... Did you get a one? I got a two and a two, two plus two, so I got a four. Oh. oh. So Laura's also is impressed by how pretty the flowers are. <laughs> they are bright yellow flowers, and they are amazing. Okay, I need to get your numbers again. Vance? Five. And Solaris? Four. And Freya? Thirteen. And Ponyboy? Eighteen. All right, Ponyboy, you are going to go first. So what you see um, about five to ten feet away from you are these two bushes come to life looking kind of like nasty dogs. You see the flowers almost turning to uh, regard you that are on these pillars. And about 30 feet away beyond this gate is this gentleman that you were just talking to who has reappeared and is just looking disgusted. Hmm. Huh? Um, can I... Uh... What should I do? Should I just hit? Can I hit? Can I hit these dog things with like the thunder wave? The thunder wave? Yeah. What's the um the area of effect of thunder wave? Fifteen foot. Oh yeah, you can get them both if you'd like. You can get them yeah. both and the flowers if you would like. Yeah, whatever I can hit, I'm gonna hit with this thunder wave. Sure. Uh, what's the saving throw? It I think it's a saving throw for those guys. A Constitution thirteen. Constitution. All right. Um. <laughs> The flowers don't make it. The bushes, um, well, one of the bushes rolled a natural 20. The other rolled an 18. They're strong bushes, you guys. <laughs> strong bushes. Well, they're hardy. OK, so thunder wave. So the, the yellow flowers that are on this pillar, they fail. So what happens to them? They get hit with this thunder wave, and these yellow flowers just kind of wilt away into, they just look really pitiful. All the light, the orange falls out of them, and they just kind of die. <laughs> well, how much damage does it do? <laughs> and I'll tell you if that happens. I, I don't know how much damage. It creates 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. OK. And do the ones that succeed, do they still take half damage? Does it say in the spell? Uh, a wave of thunder is from cubes 2d8. On successful wave, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. In addition, unsecured objects that are completely within area effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away from you by the spell's effect. Awesome. Spelling. OK, cool. So even the bushes that succeeded are still going to take half the damage. So go ahead and roll damage. So it's 2d8? It's 2d8. That's what it says. 3 and 8. Eight. OK. The vines that are on these pillars with these yellow flowers, you see a whole bunch of the flowers go boom, and get pushed off. Um, and some of the vines uncurl. And the bushes, they don't get pushed, but they definitely take the damage. And they okay. look super as upset as bushes can with big thorny mouths going. <sighs> Would you like to do anything else? Um, I think that's all I got right now. All right, Freya. Uh, how far away is Cloaked Man? He's about 30 feet away, and as far as you can see, um, it's a straight line to him, but there's a gate in the way. There's like a wrought iron uh, barred gate in the way. But it's barred, which means there's a hole there, which means can I bow him? Sure. <laughs> you mean shoot an arrow through? <laughs> I would like to bow him, please. You you bow away. All right. That is an 18. That does hit. That does hit? All right. Well, it was 18 plus 5, so it definitely hits. Yeah. And then 1d6 plus 3. 2 plus 3. So a 5. All right. It uh, grazes his side, and you see him clutch at the wound. And go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. Eight plus Excuse one, me. only a nine. Um, just before, yeah, I'll say that you see this. Just before you hit him, um, or, or just after you hit him, before he clutches the wound, um, because you grabbed him in the side and because his clothing, it was just like a cloak and a robe. There wasn't much in the way of, of stuff there. It rips a big hole in most of his clothing and... and you do notice the skin, it's red and black, and it has a weird 
molted bruising to it that looks a little familiar. Does it, so it looks like what Marianne has at, back at the inn? It kind of looks like that from this distance. Can everybody else see it or do I have to point this out? Um, you don't know what everyone else can see, but you could definitely take a moment to point to say something if you'd like. So, yeah, can I turn around and say, hey guys, it, it looks like the crazy cloak dude over there has the same weird bruising that Marianne does. Uh, mm. That's kind of disturbing. Mm. <laughs> All right, unless there's anything else you'd like to do, because that was your action. That was my action. I bowed him. You did. All right. Um, it is the flower's turn. Burr, burr, burr. I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw as what's left of the flowers on this vine puff out uh, this yellow, bright yellow pollen and it flies through the air towards you. So that's just a d20 in our wisdom modifier? That is exactly right. So an eight. I rolled 12 because it's minus one for me. I'm stupid. 16. I wrote a 10 plus wisdom? Wisdom, your wisdom saving throw. Which is plus one, so I have 11. Okay. Um, actually, I think that's everybody except Vance. Um, Vance, what'd you roll again? Eight. Yeah. Everybody else, you get a whiff of this pollen and, <laughs> and you just sneeze it out. Vance, it smells really good. And you are drawn to these flowers. They're gorgeous. And all you really want to do is move towards them and, and take a bigger whiff. Uh, you are currently charmed. And all you can do on your next turn is try to move closer to the flowers. OK, that's what I do. Um, and <laughs> then the bushes go. The bushes are going to leap forward. Uh, one of them is going to be on Solaris. The other one is going to be on Freya. So uh, one of them with its big thorny mouth, uh, 13 is probably not going to hit Solaris. And Freya, does 16 hit you? It does. Yeah, big thorny mouth comes at you. And you're going to take seven piercing damage as nice. what looks like a dog made out of a bush clamps onto your side and bites down hard. You could, you could swear it growls at you too. Um, and that's the end. Vance, you are currently enthralled by this yellow flower, and I, you're going to spend your entire turn moving as close as possible to one of them, which is only flower. like 10 feet away. It's pretty close. Uh, at the end of your turn, you can go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw, though. Okay. Seven. You just... Dude. Vance, wake up, dude. <laughs> Have you guys smelled these? They're like Vance. so sweet. They Come on over. Like it's enrapturing the scent of coming off of these things. Uh, Solaris, it is your turn. Uh, she is going to first yell at the person, say, you didn't ask for my email. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's going, to, uh, she's going to cast Hunter's Mark on him. Okay and take a shot with her bow. Sure. So that is a, uh, right. So I'm roll and then plus four. That is a 16 total. That does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Sweet, that is 1d8 plus two. That's an eight, so that's 10 total. And then Hunter's Mark. Does some extra damage, uh, right? It does. It does, uh, I think another 1d6. Tell spell ends, you deal an extra 1d6 damage whenever you hit it with a weapon attack. There you go. So another 1d6. That's just a 1. All right. And go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Is this arrow, um, it hits him in his other side, but it digs a little deeper this time. And he is now kind of clutching at his stomach, looking very pained. All right. That is a 21 total. Yeah, other side of him, it's got, and especially now that Freya pointed it out, you can clearly see uh, pretty much his entire side, as it now wells with blood from your the wound that you just gave him, it, his skin is just brown and black and bruised and necrotic and dying, and it's it's disturbing. Have you also been brought back from the dead? <laughs> uh, did you want to do anything else? 
That's what she yells at him. Okay. It is his turn. <sighs> he is going to um, clutch at his wounds and look up at all of you and, and yell back, I'll send you ascending later when we're actually open. For now, don't mind the bouncers. And he turns around and runs. And you can see that he runs about five feet before he hits what must be a stairs of some sort. And he quickly disappears from sight. Uh, and Freya, it is your turn. Uh, well, I'll probably try and get this bush off of me. Sure. Uh, I'm going to swipe at it with my short sword. Okay. Which is 17 plus 5, so I'm guessing that hits. Oh, yeah. And it's then D6, a bush. Uh, 6 plus 3 is 9 damage. Nice. You prune it really good. Good. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Actually, no. oh. um, you would get sneak attack because oh. it's... You're all like right there, so okay. um, I'm gonna say at least like Pony Boy is is next to you. So you do get sneak attack for this. So that's another D6. Another D6. Yeah, you're all clumped. Excellent. It's basically Vance is the only one that's wandered off a little bit. That is only a three. Yeah, that's still three more than you were doing. That's true. All right. Yeah, you you prune it extra real good. Um, so is it still kicking? Is it still alive, or is it just you? It was a large dog. It looks like it might now be a, a poodle with a super bad poodle cut, but it is still standing there. All right. Um, at the end of your turn, saving throw. Yeah, so Vance, you are staring lovingly into this yellow flower in front of you. The smell is intoxicating. And a vine starts to reach up and wrap around, uh, wrap around you, but it can't seem to find any purchase on your armor anywhere. So it just kind of wraps around you. It's not a thick vine or anything, but it, it tries to like hug you. It's trying to hug it's, you. It's trying to hug me, guys. This thing is great. Come check it out. Yeah. Um, Solaris is not happy about that. You're intoxicated. <laughs> You're intoxicated. <laughs> Solaris, you've got some, you, you got some uh, competition coming from some pretty, pretty flowers. You also have a large thorny monster made out of a bush in your face. Uh, once again, one of them is going to come after you, Solaris. Ooh, I rolled a 19, so I think that's going to hit. That hits. All right, you take six piercing damage as once again... <laughs> Freya, the one that you just slashed into is too hurt to really respond as it only rolls a five. Good. Suck it, Bush. <laughs> Vance, it is your turn. You take a deep breath, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Ten. That's not quite enough. <laughs> oh, my God. Vance, wake up. I love flowers. You wake up and <laughs> lovingly caress this flower. <laughs> It's just the most gorgeous thing that you've seen. Solaris, it's your turn. So how many how many things are attacking us right now? You've got two what look like dogs made out of thorny bushes next, basically next to you. One attacking you, one attacking Freya, and Pony Boy's kind of in between the two of you. And then about 10 feet away, Vance is just staring lovingly at vines. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to go after the one that's after me. I'm going to two-hand swing at it. Sure. All right, so a 19, then add plus four, so 23. Definitely hits. And it's 1d8 plus two. That is six damage. Nice. And then swing with my other hand. That is a four plus four, so only an eight. Nah, but you do take a good chunk with your first hit as you kind of prune off some of its back, and it's got this big cut out of the back of it, and it's still standing there. Anything else? Uh, she just kind of stares daggers at the vine touching Vance, but she still knows, like, she, she, she is pretty sure he's okay, like, he's not being hurt, but she's still not happy that someone's getting near him. If looks could kill. Uh, what's the range on your hunter's mark? Uh, my hunter's mark, I, uh, range is 90 feet. Okay. Um. It's good range yeah. for that hunter's mark there. You Solar? you still feel that hunter's mark that you put on the human that you were talking to, you still feel him in range. It's, it feels like he's going down and away from you. 
Uh, okay. Pony Boy, it's your turn. Um, am I close to Freya? At, you're to, right next to her. Right. So there's that one. I'm gonna slice at that. That uh, is there, this guy still alive? The dog thing. Yeah. The the bush that's attacking her is so still I'm gonna pull up out my rapier and, and slice at that dog. Sure. And do I roll my twenty? Always. Always. Nineteen plus plus something plus uh. Yeah. Is that, do I add anything to that? Yeah, so the top right-hand side of your sheet under attacks, it should say what your plus two hit is on your rapier. Four. Yeah. So 20, uh, 23. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll damage. 1d8 plus two. Seven plus two, nine. Nice. You come up kind of, you're, you're already standing next to, to Freya in this thing, but you kind of come around to get a better angle with your rapier, which is, it's a, it's a piercing finesse weapon, which is not usually for hacking and slashing through when yeah. you need to, to prune stuff. But True. you manage to just right into what must be an excellent spot because the bush almost around your rapier just kind of falls to twigs around you and scatters to the ground. I tell the bush, I say, hey, little puppy, let me trim them hedges. <laughs> <laughs> ba -dum -boom -tsh. All I'm right. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to do? That was just your action. You still have a bonus action and a move if you'd like. I have a bonus action that I'm gonna I'm gonna hit um, Freya with. I have a what do I have? I have healing. I have a healing a healing word. Ooh. Can I heal her up a little bit? Uh, is it a bonus action healing word? Yeah, it says one bonus action. Then absolutely, you can. Here you go, Freya. What what happens there? Yeah. Uh, well, she doesn't have to roll or anything. It just happens. So it so should say... 1d4 plus 3 hit points. That's what happens. So you reach out and touch your friend and go ahead and roll 1d4 plus 3. And that's how many hit points she gets back. All right. 2 plus 3, 5. Freya, you feel the warmth spread through you as some of your um, your wounds knit. Thank you. That I wasn't expecting that. Thanks. <laughs> and Freya, it's your turn. Awesome. Uh, well, first I'm gonna give a nice pat on the shoulder to, to Pony Boy there and, and, and a thank you. And thank you. Uh, <laughs> reach up really high and pat him on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, can I go try and attack this dog bush next to Solaris? Absolutely. Red. I'm gonna try with my with my long sword, because or short sword rather. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think you have a long sword. No, I don't have one of those. No, no, no. Nine plus four. Five. Uh, so 14? 14, yes. That does hit the bush. Yay! Things you get to say in D&D. &D. That hits that, the bush. That hits the bush. Mm. And <laughs> Roz, they always upset. A six, <laughs> so only six damage. All right. It is starting to look super hurt. This um, Rottweiler is starting to look more like a Chihuahua, but it is still <laughs> there and bearing its, its maw at you. Anything else? Uh... Oh, you do get sneak attack. Oh, I get Once sneak again. attack. Yeah. One more. Because it is next uh, to Solaris, so you get sneak attack. Five. All right. Once again, still there, but now it is a very hurt chihuahua. Can I just say a snarky bad dog at it? And that's all I have. Absolutely. <laughs> that's all I got. Everybody else is making bad jokes. I want to make a bad joke, too. <laughs> snarky comments are always free actions in my book. All right. <laughs> um, the... Flowers on the wall are gonna try again to hug Vance and roll a natural one. So, um, Vance, you're ready to be hugged by these flowers. Come on, give it to me. Pony, give it to me. Pony Boy's thunder wave from before just hit it hard enough and scattered some of its vines enough that it it starts to reach out and it fumbles in that awkward way that people do when they're like, should I hug you? Should I not hug you? And nothing Yes, happens. it's okay. Just give in. And he's <laughs> talked to the flower. The uh, thorny bush next to Solaris is going to once again try to bite the turtle, And that's uh, 21 to hit. So I think that does hit. Uh, so that's six more piercing damage to Ooh. Solaris. Are you still... How you doing? She, she's hurting. All right. Vance... Take a deep breath and do a wisdom saving throw. Throw that one. Bro. I rolled a two. <laughs> so oh four God. total. 
My goodness. Deanna couldn't touch your mind, but these flowers are just... Mm. You know, overpowering you, Vance. Pretty I much. like flowers. It's yeah. pretty smell. Uh, Solaris, it is your turn. Vance just is... the one bush left, right? The little chihuahua? Just the chihuahua. I'm swinging it, singing it out of both arms. Sure. That is a 17 plus 4, 21. Absolutely. And then that is going to do oh, uh, 6 plus 2 points of damage, so 8 damage with one arm. Um, even before you decide to swing down on the next strike, you cleave this bush in two, and it scatters to debris and leaves and nothing. Nice. And you can still move and use your second attack or do something else if you'd like. Is there anything else to hit other than Vance? Uh, <laughs> roll a perception check. All right. Uh, that's going to be uh, plus four. That is a six total. Ugh. Um, well, you lose feeling on your hunter's mark. In the midst of the battle, you kind of didn't notice. You, you have a sense of where it went, but the, the guy that you hunter's marked must have moved out of your range. Um, and you can't see him anymore. You don't see anything else obviously attacking anyone. You, you have noticed that the vines are trying to hug your paladin friend. Yeah, so I'm going to walk over and kind of grab Vance and start shaking him a little bit gently. Okay. Vance, uh, Vance, uh, uh, uh. are you okay? <laughs> I'm concerned for you. His, His eyes, flowers are great. His eyes are a little glassy, and he's just grinning at this big yellow flower that he's like inches away from. Um, Pony boy, it's your turn. Um, what do we? So what do we have now? What do we? What do you guys? What do we do? Well, I would say that you would know that your bardic inspiration, one of the things that it does is people can use the inspiration that you give to them to aid them in saving throws as well as attacks. Oh. <laughs> so, go, so you see that Vance seems to be very entranced by these yes, flowers. Yes. He's, he's got, <laughs> you know when people have paint and they get like the ring around there? Right. He's got like a ring of pollen just all over his face as he's been just... <laughs> You're a mess, Vance. You're a mess. And he, so, glassy-eyed, is obviously just charmed by these flowers. So I can give him some inspiration. You absolutely can. So do I wa have to walk over to him or I can just shoot it his way? I believe that uh, bardic inspiration, I think you just need to be able to see. Uh, to do, Choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet who can hear you. So what do you say to Vance to inspire him as he is entranced by this flower? I go, Vance. Vance, your time with the flowers are done. The splendor in the grass is over. Arise, your paladin. Arise and help us out, you bum. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stinger. Yep. All right, so Vance, go ahead and you get your D6 inspiration. Okay. Um, Freya, is there anything you would like to do? Uh, this is just entertaining, watching Vance dance with these vines, so I'm just laughing. <laughs> All right, uh, the vines are going to try in one last desperate attempt. Nope, Vance, I would love for you to roll a wisdom saving throw. And you do okay. feel kind of in the back of your head. You hear your friend Pony Boy giving you encouragement to maybe focus on something else. So you Encouragement can... to what? I, to hug the vine? What, what does he want me to do? <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> Not even kidding. Natural twenty. Inspiration, but it was just there for help. <laughs> Vance, yes. Hell yeah. In a in a moment, inspired by Pony Boy, even without his help, it's just enough for you to realize deep in your mind that what am I doing? And you pull away from these vines as as you see that what was trying to hug you is actually just trying to wrap around you and they've got these big wicked thorns on the side of them and as they continue to kind of ineffectually claw for you you pull away and, and shake the the pollen out of your face and look around and you no longer feel in fact those are the ugliest flowers you have ever seen Ugh. those are disgusting how did you ever think that they were pretty be gone foul temptress and i'm gonna try to Cleave it with a long sword and see if I can. Sure, that was technically the end of your turn, but I'm oh. going to say that between Pony Boy's but I was inspiration, so inspired that I've... <laughs> between his inspiration and and you rolling a natural twenty, why not go ahead and roll an attack? Oh, appreciate that. <laughs> uh, all right, sixteen to hit. Uh, yes, that definitely hits. Okay. 
And then so one plus three, so four. <laughs> you're, you're trying to do it a little too fast after recovering, and you shear off the flower that you were looking at, that you were kind of... Yeah, the mm. one flower, like... Yeah. <laughs> the one whose <laughs> pollen was all over your face. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, you kind of all have stepped back. You, you, you all get the sense that in this moment, you're probably safe from these, these vines and these flowers. And Solaris, as you feel the, the range of this guy that you've hunted marked leave you and are left standing wondering when the Temple to Bathsheba is actually going to open since it's under construction, we'll stop there. <laughs> Let me give you some experience. All right. For, um, for building bricks and an entire <laughs> bucket of them, um, for unhand my blood, <laughs> and the first use of the towel, um, and a pony boy being in performance mode. And Did my best. It was not. It was not that that great of a role. <laughs> it it fooled the gentleman you were talking to. It was also fun. The, the stuff you said. In, in my when I usually ask you to roll like performance checks or deception checks, I will change how difficult the check is depending on how creative you are and what you say. So, awesome. if you are trying to be persuasive, and you just say something super persu persuasive, you would probably need to roll a one. So. You were okay. you were pretty convincing. I kind of okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, Solaris for um, being jealous over flowers and Freya for <laughs> deciding to climb a tree. Plus the stuff that you killed. I'm going to give you a total of 930 experience to split Oof. between the four of you. Mm -hmm. So 232.5. God, I love how fast you do. How that. How much? 232. 232. 232. 232. Yes. Oh. And we'll take a second, and everybody has a moment to say where we can find you, and if you've got anything specific you'd like to talk about coming up this week, let's start with Jack. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Jack underscore P, and on Twitch uh, here at it's Jack Patillo, two T's, two L's. And starting tonight, after dinner, I'm starting a Assassin's Creed Origins playthrough until I finish the game. So, nice. Yes. Excellent. And, and hopefully we'll see another Lego build from you sometime in the future. Yes, I finished my my Falcon, my Millennium Falcon's back there. I see the, it. I see it. It's, it's, so cool. it's huge, man. Hey, let me see if I can. Oh God, I'll I'll move my camera so you can see it. Uh, it's over there. See it? <laughs> there you go. It's huge. It's That's quite true. large. Yeah. Well, so. you you've got your build on your your YouTube uh, your YouTube channel, right? You yeah. YouTube.com slash Jack Patillo. You can go watch it all. It's very cool. Kraken, how about you? Uh, hey everyone, I'm Kraken. I make YouTube, uh, YouTube videos on uh, youtube.com slash Kraken2 and on Twitch, stream at YouTube or Twitch slash Kraken. Uh, I play a bunch of, you know, weird games. Lately, I've been doing a lot of horror stuff, a lot of modded stuff. We try to break whatever we play, so that's what I've been doing this week. Breaking all the things are always fun. Mika? Yep. Yes, I am a Twitter at Mika Burton and Instagram just slash Mika Burton. Everywhere I am, I'm just Mika Burton and uh, I'm releasing some not so spooky Halloween cosplay photos uh, this week, yeah. and I'm going to be doing another Halloween shoot this weekend. So lots of the the pretty photos of sparkly idol girls are coming. So stay tuned for that. Excellent. Looking forward to that. And Dante. Yeah, you can uh, follow me at Dante Bosco on uh, Instagram and Twitter, and uh, and my Twitch is uh, Dante Bosco, and you can. We're, I'm finishing my movie this week, but as soon as that's done, we wrap that. I'll be continuing on season two of watching live streaming. Let's watch Avatar. You can catch the opening of the second season here where uh, voice actress Grey DeLau joined us, who plays uh, Azula, joined us for, for when Azula comes out in season two. So check it out on my Twitch channel. Excellent. And I, as always, am your humble DM, Lauren, also known as OboCrazy. You can find me on Twitter at OboCrazy, where you will find me tweeting a lot of stuff about either D&D or music gigs that I'm doing, because when I'm not being a bard here, I'm being a bard in real life. And <laughs> you can also find me on Wednesdays on One Grung Above, playing Bangarang the Grung, because frogs, frogs are awesome. And uh, next week, I will also be on this channel doing our extra life stream. So uh, check out twitch.tv slash DND for November 4th. We're doing a whole big live stream. I'm going to be running a game and a whole bunch of other people running awesome games. We're all doing it for extra life. And so definitely come check us out and see if you want to donate and name a dinosaur or tell me to use something in the game to 
kill a whole bunch of people that are going to be fun to play with because that's what we do for charity. For the kids. For the kids. Awesome. Anyway, until then and until next week, thank you for joining us as always, and we'll see you next encounter. Bye. Bye.